Well, that was messed up. <laughs> My camera stopped working for a sec there. Alright. Hello, and welcome to Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. My name is Brendan. This is my show. How are y'all doing? Erica, Stevie. So today I decided to. <laughs> I'm good, man. Thanks. Fun time in the chat, right? Um, so today, I decided that I am going to stop being a slacker and I'm going to finish the short story that I've been working on on stream. Um, it's getting there. It's it's coming along. Um, so much so. Let's put my main screen here. Oh god. There we go. Man. Everything's been a little weird today. With the with OBS. I'm not sure why. But yeah, um it's been coming along very well. Uh what is the date today? Today is the eleventh. Um Yeah. So today's the 11th, next week's the 18th, the week after the 25th. Right. So, um, I am going to be off the week of the 25th. So I'm going to be streaming probably all week. So look forward to that, for one. Uh, and B, I'd like to finish this short story this week and next week so that on the 25th I can kind of chow down over the course of a week and just get something done. Um, see what I can do. Uh, taking some inspiration from my good friend John Derek Murphy in that regard where, you know, just want to see how far I can push myself in, in a week sort of thing with a new story. That's pretty crazy, Erica. I wish I could do that. I, I have a lot. I don't have a lot of time, unfortunately. I'm also a very slow writer, in my opinion. I don't write a ton of words, but it takes me longer to write those words. That being said, I do a lot less weird editing and stuff. So maybe that's just the process, right? I did something weird in this scene. Oh, totally, man. Um, I 
I used to be a total seat by the pants guy, and I found that I floundered a lot, where I would write the things that I knew, and then I would just stop. I would grind to a, to a very grind to a sharp halt sort of thing. So I found that um, even though it's not super natural to me, I really need to a do outlines. Even basic ones, like they don't have to be super complicated. Uh, I'm not a very huge detail planner, which is more of a, I need to have an idea of what scenes I'm doing, what's going to happen to them, and why. Um, yeah, like what, what, what Eric was saying. Like, uh, see the pants making decisions on the fly, like not planning. Oh, and Hayward, what's up, man? Um, so yeah. I found that I, I do better when I know what's going on and and picturing the scene, having having a good layout for the plot and the plot in each scene and what I'm trying to do with the scene, its purpose really helps me. Exactly, see the pants. <laughs> I need to find a middle balance because I find that if I spend too much time planning, it's almost as bad um, then if, uh, then if I don't plan enough, thanks for supplying definitions for it. I appreciate it. <laughs> versus architects exactly the writers who just write and it all comes together and those who have to plan out all the details in order to to get the story to work uh, it's it's an old expression from I don't even know it's from but it, it's one of those things that's kind of just been around <laughs> yeah, Pop Princess, that's pretty much what I'm saying. Like, I don't think I'm particularly great at either, so I need to find a good balance between the two. Um, there is. Where did it go? helped a lot with my outlining and the other one that's helped a lot is a book called uh, Write Your Novel in 90 Days also published by Writer's Digest. Um, I think the 90 day goal was a little unrealistic uh, but that that book really taught me what I want to do with outlines and what I should be trying to do with outlines uh, especially in terms of scenes and and laying out your scenes and that kind of thing. Uh, so I really like that book as well. I don't have a copy of it because unfortunately I gave it away to a friend. Um, 
But yeah. And then using a, a decent writing tool like Scrivener where you can kind of lay out all those plot points and expand on them, uh, like the cue card view and all that really helps me with that kind of thing. Where you know, I, I don't have it in this one because uh, I'm on second draft, but uh, this and you can put all your like plot points on the cue cards and they only show up on the cue cards, uh, that kind of thing. Nice, Erica. It's an it's an interesting read for sure. Uh, I I don't buy the whole ninety day thing, but there's a lot of really good points. I learned a lot from reading that book. The one I want to get now is um, just because I've been curious about it. Is there's one on uh, writing a novel in fifteen minutes, like fifteen minutes a day, a day sort of thing. And I'm very intrigued by that process. I, I I understand it's gonna take many, many days to do it. Story back. Interesting. Oh, I've heard of this, yeah. Well, I come from a screenwriting background, so I've read most of the screenwriting books there are, or a good many of them anyway. Um, so yeah. And I agree with too with that word win. Um, I study computer programming. I like the logic of iterations and, and stuff like that. It can be unproductive at times though. Hey Silverman, what's going on? Yeah, and for sure RPGs help a ton. Um, I think any sort of storytelling uh, exercise is it will be good for your brain in terms of doing this, in terms of writing, right? How many projects are you actually working on right now, Erica? I'm curious, because I think it's a lot, but I just... This is cool, yeah. Interesting. 
there's a lot of that kind of stuff with with screenwriters. Okay. It's a lot of projects. It's good that they're different though. Um, and for the record, if you haven't heard me say it before, uh, Scrivener is the best tool for writing graphic novels, period. In fact, that's how I discovered Scrivener in the first place. Uh, was through a comic book called Wasteland. Um, the guy who wrote that actually designed the Scrivener template for doing graphic novels. Um, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I can I can definitely do that. Actually, I can do that right now. That'd be real quick. Just give it a quick overview. Uh, new project. I just opened up a new comic script. Um, this is the page template. So the interesting thing about comics is there's no standard formatting like there is in film. Uh, film and TV tend to have a very, very standardized format, uh, no matter where you look. Uh, comics don't really have that. That being said, there's a few conventions that tend to be like very consistent. Uh, the first being uh, you all start with a page and then panels are separate uh, separate breakdowns inside the page. Generally what you do is you, uh, depending on, depending on the format you're using, uh, generally you put how many panels are going to be in the page. Right? But the interesting thing, and the reason that Scrivener is really, really good for doing graphic novels, is these symbols here. See how this says like dollar sign n? What this does when you um, like, let's throw a few more panels in here. God, it's been so long since I did this. Where's my formats? Am I missing something? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's been ages since I've done this. Yeah. So you have all your text. Um, so, Superman enters from 
outer space. Blah, blah, blah. Like in film, you'd have dialogue like this. Yeah, uh, I can actually, I can totally do that, CD. Um, that's not a problem. In fact, as a mod, can't you indicate it as a clip? Is that a doable? I don't know. I can do it either way. I'm just, just wondering. I'm entering the planet from outer space. Cool. Sound effects. Sonic Boom. Cool. Anyway, so when you compile this, uh, and this is the reason that I think it's one of the best things ever. Uh, so I'm gonna compile this, put in my documents, test. Okay. Open that up. Documents. One. Okay, sure, no problem, Stevie. I will do it. As everything opens in the wrong window. So you see here, those little symbols are uh, meta, -diag meta tags. So when it populates the script, it does them in, in the order that they appear and auto populates the number. So you have page one, panel one, two, three, four, five. The reason that this is awesome is because if I created a new page, um, new from template, comic page, go, yay, things are happening, right? When I compile this one, it'll put page two, panel one. But then if I just swap these pages and recompile it, uh, test three, it auto populates it again, right? So now that page that was page two is now page one, page one is now page two, and it just keeps track of it for you. Um, it's it's super useful if you want to move things around or if you want to add or take away pages without having to worry about redoing all the little finicky numbers every single time. Uh, super useful for that. Uh, it does do the uh, dialogue formatting and all that, like this. Uh, that being said, how this appears depends on the, the final format you're using. Um, for example, Dark Horse has a very specific formatting that they use for all of their scripts. Uh, some of the others are different. Uh, Alan Moore's scripts are ridiculously stupid and in all caps, which is the most annoying thing ever. But he loves it. He types it all, entirely in all caps all the time. Um, I, it, I don't know why. He just does. It's really, really bad. Um, but yeah. So that's what that's like the main reason why I really really like this. It makes writing comics a lot a lot easier, uh, especially if you want to move things around. I do want to look, um, and I don't know if it's possible, but I'd really like to figure out if I can make a macro that would allow me to populate this number along with the other ones based on what's on the page. That'd be really, really awesome. Uh, other than that, I don't know if there's anything else that I should mention with that. Let me check something real quick here. Johnson's page in here. Uh, Anthony Johnson's the writer of Wasteland and the guy who kind of, he, he made the template uh, and is the reason I actually bought Scrivener in the first place. 
Um, Yeah, like he uses weird fonts and stuff. I don't like. I use entirely Courier New, uh, Courier Prime, which is a much easier to read version of Courier New, uh, designed specifically by graphic designers to not look awful when you're reading. For OneNote Silent Blue or uh, for Microsoft Word? <laughs> uh... Sorry, I'm just scrolling through this article real quick to see if there's anything that I should mention. Yeah, I don't know why my, um, I don't know why it wasn't doing the Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. Cool. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and also, if you, um, it doesn't just work for, uh, It doesn't just work for the uh, individual pages. Like if you have them separate, you can actually do it inside as well. See, look, it split them up. But yeah. So that's, that's the main thing. Well, I mean, Courier is, um, Courier is the screenwriting font and I find it super easy to read, uh, because it's, uh, it's not a justified font, uh, and all that. And it does all that things, <laughs> uh, with that. But yeah, no, I mean, if, you wouldn't use Courier for like a final like ebook or something like that. I just that's what I use because it's easier for me to read and write. And Courier Prime has a um, uh, Courier Prime has a sans serif version, if I'm not mistaken. I thought they did. Yeah, they do. Boom. So yeah. Uh, so other than that, um, back to Erica's question, when you add illustrations, uh, unfortunately, Scrivener does not do really, really well with illustrations. Um, that is one of its uh, failing points, in my opinion. Uh, any sort of image file is not really handled well. Uh, that being said, uh, I would not use Scrivener to... Um, I would not use Scrivener to do a final copy of anything. I would use it to do a draft and then I would export it into another uh, thing like InDesign or something like that. I'm assuming you're talking specifically because it, yours isn't necessarily a graphic novel, but more like an illustrated narrative, uh, something like uh, Stardust or something like that, for example. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that's, that's the thing that I think when you talk about that. Yeah, you wouldn't use Scrivener itself to make the comic. You only use it to, to do the script. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. So for your file, I would I would probably use uh, something like InDesign, or maybe something like uh, Manga Studio, even Photoshop to a certain extent. Um, Stevie knows a lot more about that stuff than I do, uh, for sure. But um, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't use Scrivener for the final product. You would definitely export it. Um, and I recommend you do that in general for most things. Um, like you would export it and then you would use a more general text editor just to clean it up and make it look nice sort of thing. But yeah, there you go. It's my tutorial on, um, <laughs> on writing comics in Scrivener. So I'm just gonna make a, a mental note to highlight this. Or mental note, I'm, I'm making a physical note to highlight this. Highlight uh, Scrivener tutorial. Yeah, that would be my, that would have been my guess as well. Uh, hey 404, what's going on? <laughs> I just myself in design. I had uh, Drani teach me in design once. She was not a happy camper. <laughs> uh. Yeah. For sure, Word. For sure. I'm good, man. How are you? Just Drani has InDesign. Drani is a professional graphic designer, so Drani is all about InDesign. Um, she, she, she <laughs> the thing, the thing about it is though, uh, Drani knows all of it in German, and she, she has trouble teaching me uh, shortcuts because they're all in German. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the uh, dollar sign ends are tags so that it auto compiles uh, certain uh, values when you uh, when you when you write or when you export, I guess. Compile words words fail me words words fail me. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, um, I just had it open. Is it still open here? It is. This is uh, what I was talking about specifically. Um, this is Anthony Anthony Johnson, who uh, designed the comic template for Scrivener. Uh, I really, really like his comic book, Wasteland. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, he's a cool guy. And uh, this, this tutorial specifically is what uh, got me to start using Scrivener. Because I went to his website and found it, <laughs> sort of thing. All right. I feel like I'm missing something at the end of this scene, but I don't know what else to do.
Oh, I'll move on to scene four and then I'll come back to it. Maybe in the next draft. Oh, it could be right. That makes sense. I, uh, for those who don't know, I reinstalled my OS and all that, and some of my settings are still off. Uh, Should be better. I think the fonts are different. Just a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it too much, it's just weird, weirds me out, I think that's the problem. Yeah, that'd be kind of nice, right? I don't really mind it. It's not as bright on my computer. Ooh, oops. Uh, but I understand. There we go. That's better.
Um, for this project, I've written entirely on PC. In general, I tend to do better when I write on paper. Um, it's one of those things, though, that everything you write on paper, you do have to transfer across. That takes more time. Um, often I'll mix. Um, I'll do like some on paper, then go straight to the PC, uh, put that in, keep writing, keep writing, print that out, write on paper. Um, yeah, I print a lot of stuff. Um, I like working with hard copies, uh, for sure. This isn't even the right scene. It depends. It depends. I do a lot of my brainstorming stages uh, directly on paper. Um, I didn't do them for this one, uh, but I have some stuff. Uh -huh. I use um, these a lot when I'm... I use these a lot. These are from uh, that book I was showing earlier. The uh, uh, the writer's compass. Um, yeah, I use these a lot just as kind of a get my ideas down on paper. Like this is like a basic, 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 basic outline uh, with kind of like your main plot points, character sort of thing, main goals. So I like that. Uh, I do stuff like this a lot. This is for um, this story here that I'm working on. <laughs> uh, that thing I just showed Erica, it was uh, a template of an outline um, from that book I was talking about earlier. I think I have access to it. I have the PDF itself. Um, on my computer. Do I have a link to it? I don't know if it's available. Um, I'll put it on my Discord in my file repository. If you guys want it. So that's up there on my file share, my Discord links. Oh, sorry. I gotta adjust my mic settings again. I uh, moved some things. All right, four four. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, yeah. Uh, Cheers, man. And there's a link to the Discord. I put the PDF in there. I never use my Discord, though. <laughs> Very rarely.
Oh man, twelve fifty seven. All right, uh, I'm gonna take a uh, five minute break. Um, so we're about an hour in. So uh, yeah, I will see you all in a bit. <laughs>